And if you do not know Miss Connie Nieto, I want to see a show of hands who does not know Miss Connie Nieto. You do not, Malena. Malena's in for a treat. Eric, you're in for a treat. Miguel, what about you? Yeah, you know you know Miss Connie Nieto. Yeah, if you guys do not know Miss Connie Nieto, and I and she blushes and she laughs and she tells everybody that uh, that I'm crazy. But um, if you do not know Miss Connie Nieto, you're in for a treat. Not only is she the most Miami person you'll ever meet, because she is Miami personified, and you'll hear it in her voice. But she is one of the sweetest, smartest, uh, most knowledgeable people in the association. I fight for her. Uh, I insist on her being our only trainer because she is just a plethora of information with just so much charm. I don't get tired of telling her this. Um, I, the way I met Connie, I'll tell you guys really quick before I get started, was that I joined the association. I had been a realtor for almost 20 two years, 21 years in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. I joined the association. I had three listings. I went to my broker who was not London Foster. And my broker said to me, oh, come tonight and I'll show you how to input a listing, how to do a listing agreement, how to input it. And I said, great. After three hours, three hours sitting there in front of the computer, I literally turned around and I said, this guy's an idiot. What am I doing? Oh my God, I made a mistake. I need to go back to New York. This is crazy. It can't take three hours to do a listing agreement. It cannot take three hours to do an input of a listing. And I went back to the association the next day and I said, I want my $980 back. And then, can anybody guess what they said? They said, bye. Yeah, sorry. No, once, once we got our money, it's no. And I go, no, 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 you don't understand. I joined yesterday. And they're like, yeah, <laughs> bye. Sorry, none of that. And the guy in the front, which you'll know who he is, eh, Connie, really cute guy, very, very buff. He goes to me, dude, you're giving a class on Matrix if you want to go and see it. And I'm like, no, I want my money back. And I walk into the class and it's Miss Connie Nieto in a cape. Because that was I everything. Your cape. <laughs> in a cape. She showed up in a cape to class and I was like, that is everything. I sat there in the class just with my mouth open because it was a incredibly informative. She was incredibly charming, but because I said, man, it's so much easier when you know what you're doing, right? So I made a pact with myself and I quit work. And I spent the next four weeks, the next 28 days, I went to the association morning, noon, and night. I was going to Matrix 101, Matrix 201, Matrix 301, to the point that one day I walk into Matrix 101 for the fourth time, and Miss Connie goes, I Memo's here. So if I want to go get coffee, you guys know that Memo's going to be able to give the class because he's already taken it like four times this month. So I don't know what's up with him, but he's taking this class for four. Of course, everyone's cracking up and they're like, going look at me like, who is this guy? Is he part of the staff? I did this for myself. I learned Matrix inside and out. I was going to every class that Connie was in and every day she was in a cake. So it was fabulous. It was incredibly informative. And there became a, my, my business crush on Connie because she is just, you guys are in for a treat. She's just such an incredibly knowledgeable person. And that is the reason why we asked her to join. Um, guys, I'm going to continue to let people in. I'm going to get started with a little uh, screen sharing. Uh, for those of you that are not a London Foster agent, I invite you to visit our website. It is www joinlondonfoster.com. You're going to find a couple of really interesting things. The first one is a, the frequently asked questions. I highly recommend you visit this. It is just an incredibly informative, a, you know, Q&A about our company. If you would like to have someone call you to find out more about the firm, if you would like to attend a seminar, this is where you go. If you'd like to join, it is the third one. Oops, 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 oops. Oh my God, I almost, I almost deleted someone. Uh, I also recommend you watch this video. It's a great opportunity for you to meet our broker and find out a little bit about the five core principles of London Foster. I also wanna make sure that, hold on a second. Uh, we talk a little bit about the back office. Uh, we keep on getting, I keep on getting the same questions over and over again. And a lot of it has to do with deposits. Guys, if you need to find out information about how to make a deposit, go to our back office, go to deposit instructions. It'll have all the instructions, including a video where Bobby sits there. 
And for the next five minutes, he actually explains to you how to make a deposit at London Foster. You can also read the instructions here. You have all the commission information there. You even have a function to send information to your clients. So guys, visit the My Deals Deposit Instructions. Another great resource for answers, questions is not memo. It's the Q&A in the, 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 the questions and answers called the help desk here on LondonFoster.net. And again, if you go to that very first question, how do I make an escrow deposit? Boom, we give you the long-winded information. We give you the link so that you can go on your own and check out that video. It's all available to you there. Um, I've also had a lot of people asking me regarding the vendors. Uh, the vendors list is there for your use. It is not in any way, shape, or form a, an obligation to use any of the vendors that we provide for you. The way I call this is the little black book. I've got my little black book. Rosa's got her little black book. Connie's got her little black book. And if you sat us down for lunch, we'd probably share it with you. Right, Rosa? So the idea is to have this all on one website to make your life easier. So for instance, if you're looking at who London Foster recommends for a mortgage, you're gonna see that it's the people here at Supreme Lending. You're gonna have all their contact information. You can even download an app. The same thing for title, photography, printing, all of that up to accounting is gonna be preferred vendors. After that, what we did is we just gave you frequently asked phone numbers like the NAR, the FAR, the DVPR, the local associations that we belong to. If you're ever curious about joining an association, you can look up all the amount. This is crazy. The amount of associations we belong to, you can look them up and you are welcome to join a second, a third. We have one agent that is a member of four. It is up to you completely. Also, we have here what we call the bulletin boards. The bulletin boards, the idea here is that we share information within each other. Give me just one second, I'm getting uh, two questions. Okay, Karen, what you need to do is you need to go to the top of your screen. I'm okay on my phone. Okay, perfect. It's not the uh, computer. Blanca, Blanca is asking, good morning. How soon after yeah. joining London Foster do you receive the Wells Fargo deposit card? Thank you, Blanca, for that question. What you are going to do is you're gonna to go to office manager and you're going to request the escrow deposit card. You fill out this form, it'll be mailed directly to your home. It is taking forever. It was used, it used to take six days. It is now up to 21 days. We have no control over it, Blanca. I apologize. It simply has to do with what do you think? COVID. <laughs> um, you know, I guess they they they're understaffed and they're taking just a little bit longer. But go ahead and fill out that form. Once you're a London Foster agent, we will provide an okay for it and you will get it. Again, let me know, Blanca, how long it takes you to get it because the last person told me it took them 21 days. But that is, is that how easy you request it and you're able to deposit it directly into your London Foster escrow account, making your life a little bit easier. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share here. Again, I'm gonna mute everybody. Um, I just wanna make sure that we go over one last thing. Um, guys, these pro trainings are for you. We provide them for you. They are a lot of work to put together. It takes coordination, advertising, marketing. It takes uh, uh, admin assistance to send out the, the reminders and get everything ready for you guys. I want to remind you guys how important these trainings are. It's not just about learning something. It's also about camaraderie. It's also about finding out what makes Malena tick, what makes a Amen tick, what makes Mr. James. Oh God, and I'm not sharing his image. But James, I haven't seen you forever, welcome. Um, I wanna make sure that everybody realizes that we do these for you. We record all of these trainings as I've shown you in the past. You can go to londonfoster.net. You can go under education and look up any and all trainings that we have done for you. All these trainings we provide you with the PowerPoint presentation. We also provide you with the video. So every training that you go to, know that you will be able to participate in it forever. So for instance, a, a, who was it that just joined? Um, a, Blanca, I think is the one that just joined. A, she's, she, didn't, she didn't attend the probate training or the FERPTA or any other number, the Zillow. 
all of these trainings are there and you guys can watch it at your leisure. The idea is to always have uh, education available to you. This is in no way trying to replace what Connie and the people at the Miami Association do. I always tell you, go to their trainings first. Our trainings are a little bit more of a practical, like guide, guide you as you go along. So the idea is that you have both at your disposal. Um, let me just double check. I think we have 34 people in the room. I think we should go ahead and get started, Ms. Connie Nieto. Before we get started, let me thank you one more time for doing this. We so appreciate it. We appreciate uh, everyone on your team that helps us coordinate this because it's not easy. Miss mm -hmm. Connie is a very busy person and getting her on a Wednesday at 10 a.m. is like winning the lottery. So we're very, very fortunate and very grateful. And on behalf of our team here at London Foster, especially on behalf of our broker, Bobby Mahalati, uh, we want to let you know how much we appreciate this, how, how exciting it is for us. And more importantly, uh, that you are part of our family and that you, you know, participate in the growth of our agent. Well, good morning, everyone, with a, a welcome like that. All I can say is that uh, happily, please invite me once a month so I make sure that my self-esteem is always at its highest uh, level <laughs> and never on low. Uh, again, you know that I love you, uh, Memo, that I really appreciate and love the invitations. And I'm here today to share with you one of the things that I probably love the most. As realtors, one of the things that you have to manage and maintain and gather is statistics for presentations, uh, to enable your customers to understand what the market is doing for you to be able to share um, forecast or uh, what's happening in an area. Sometimes you need statistics, um, hyper local, and sometimes you just need something to post on social media that it can easily be, sh uh, be shared. Uh, the class I'm offering today is something that we have recorded. Um, and I am going to ask you if you would like to participate and engage to do so. Let me make sure I can peek at the chat so I can see what you're writing. Uh, so when I ask uh, for your input, I can get it. Um, statistics are a big deal. I also want to remind you that if you do renew your membership early, you will get education credits. And your Miami trainers, all three are certified um, EPRO. PSA, AHW, whatever, I forget what the other part is. We are also um, a PSA certified. And when you get these credits, you can use it to get designations or certifications um, if you renew early. And we will be offering this fall PSA, uh, Who is that? Uh, REPA, and we will also be is that your favorite person in the world? Um, yeah. All righty, um, and we will be offering this fall uh, the PSA, EPRO, and REBA. Now, um, how many of you as realtors have an assistant, wish you had an assistant, or are you an assistant? So we will be offering a class that's really meant for assistants, but we also recognize that many times you are your own assistant. So there are certifications and designations that you can take, look out for them. The next thing I want to do is remind you that we do click through for your safety, right, into here the gateway. But I also want you to know that you can do this, like Memo said, mobily. You can log into the gateway. Yeah, I figured that you were. We are our own assistant, so that tends to happen. You can log into the gateway from your cell phone, from your iPad, from your tablet, from your laptop, from your MacBook, from your desktop device. Why I say this is if you're on the go and you need to use IMAP, or uh, you need to use any other um, system or something that we have, you do have direct access from this gateway from your phone. The reason I know this is because sometimes you will write to me. I love WhatsApp. Any WhatsApp users here? No, yes. Rosa, I see you. Do you use WhatsApp? Um, if you're a WhatsApp user, I love WhatsApp. So if one of you would write and say, hey, can you see if this is working? Or um, are you able to see this? Or can you, you know, I'm looking to do this. To me, it's super easy. I always have my phone with me. I have a 23 and a 25 year old. I, that's how we communicate. If, if any of your parents, you may understand. So the phone is precious. I have it. I will share with you. My cell phone number is 305-898-8918. If you call me, I teach the phone. I will not answer. I know I won't. And then when I drive home, I try to like disconnect. But if you text, I will inevitably see it. So if you need assistance, I'd love to help you that way. Please reach out. 
With that said, I'll tell you that I sign into the system, the gateway here through my cell phone. So if I can do it, you can. Um, when you do come into the gateway, I want to show you a couple of things. As Miami members, you have access directly to Florida Realtors right here. And part of what I'm going to go through is SunStats. Now, I believe there is a direct log into SunStats. And of course, here it is. Okay. So you as Miami members could click through here. I'm also going to come into Matrix. Uh, I will show you a couple of things in Matrix that you can do. One of them is the 1004 MC report. Um, which will give you information on the housing and how much availability there is. And this can help you price and uh, see what's happening in an area. And then there's another, another report that I want you guys to know and see, because we have so few um, listings in the market right now, you need to have a grasp of what's happening and then maybe potentially say how many days things last on the market, et cetera. And you wanna show this to your investor, to someone's buying um, maybe to rent or who some, someone who's looking for a home for themselves or a second home or a vacation home. So I'll show you that as well. So I'm gonna start by clicking into matrix and coming here and I wanna make it fun. So the first thing I wanna do is I need the first zip code that's sent to me in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and use that to go ahead and get started and do a little review. So you can gather some statistics quickly. Oh, my phone number. Well, I need a zip code but I'll share my phone number, there you go. Um, so a zip code, please. All righty, uh, Maria, that 33332, tell us what area that is. And I'm gonna come into search and do a little cross property. But that's in Weston. Excellent. And then I see Gustavo, um, Eric in Sunrise, we'll do both. Is that a deal? And what I'm trying to show you here is when you do a cross property quick, you can actually select by property type. Um, thank you, Memo, for sharing that. I think I'm gonna copy that for my records. <laughs> um, I'm gonna click here quick and I'm gonna show you this because I always think it's interesting. Uh, first, if you were gonna do a 1004 MC report, you would do active and closed, but I want to gauge what's happening in an area and I wanna see if there is commercial because if there's commercial movement, guess what? People that go to commercial locations usually are shoppers. So that means that there's movement in an area. I wanna see everything that's happening. So when people tell me what's going on in my vicinity, in my area, and I wanna verbalize these statistics, this is something that you could quickly run. So I'm gonna select active, I'm gonna select closed, and I'm gonna leave it six months because there's so much activity currently and rented. And you said that you wanted um, 333 Maria, Give me a second, 33332. Three, so we're gonna come here and put 33332 three, three, and we're gonna look at results, right? And we have 180, um, 160 items to look at. With that said, um, I wanna teach you that if you click here and you only have 25 on display, you're really only selecting 25 items. If I were to come in here and ask you to start looking at statistics and you're looking here at $24 and it's active, a commercial lease, you have a rental, you have a residential land, there's such a mixture of things. Can you imagine coming into here and trying to decipher all of this data? It's a lot. So here's something I like to show you, a little tip. You can actually come into the system and click this all and that'll check every item that comes up. So what I'm going to do here is show you how you could get a report that will give you activity, how many days on market, what sold, what hasn't sold with median average pricing, price per square foot in an area and more. Does that sound something that you would like to share and know about the area that you farm and work in? You could use that in a presentation. So instead of trying to decipher all of this, you could come to print Okay, and you can select a report. And now I know it says CMA, but I always like you to leverage the data that you can get. Give me one second. And I'm gonna use this CMA one line summary report and you can email it, right? But I'm gonna print it to PDF because I wanna show you. Always make sure your branding is on the top. So when you are in matrix, make sure to select what you would like for the branding. 
And here, this is what you use as your header in the system. And then next, I want you to see, and I'm gonna move the chat over a little bit and move my browser here, because I want you to see, you have active one commercial land and one sold one. So maybe you don't do commercial, but if you have an investor, they may wanna know what the movement is in your area. Then you have commercial industrial, so um, location, location, right? And you have five, and then we have a one closed property. But single family homes in this area, right? I want you to see that they give you a price per square foot that they tell you, right, the date that it's on the market, how many days it's been. You have area, beds, bath, square footage, total area, you're built. Talk about a lot of information along with address and subdivision. But currently there are 22 actives, right? There are an, a, low, a high of 11 million eight, and a low of 850K, the medium price being 1,544,000. Why is that medium? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you hear all of that or do I repeat? All right. Sorry about that. I was just muting everybody. So there's, I'm trying to see if got I it. can. You got it. So what I wanted to show you here was there's 22 active listings, right? And the high is 11.8 million, the low of 850K. But that median number is highly important because that's the most common sale price and it's a million five. So if someone comes in this area and they tell you that they would like to purchase a single family home for 700,000, you could immediately tell them that in the last six months, that's not possible by showing them this. Does that help? You can also tell them that they last over 139 days on the market because that's what we have here, the days on market. And that the price per square foot average is $563.73 for a single family home. Now, with that said, I'm going to scroll down, right? We have uh, the closed properties here, okay? And you also have listing information here, the median, averages, and the days on market. Then we have condos, townhouses, and villas. There are two currently active, and they were closed, 10 of them, 22 days, medium price, 537000 So that person that may be looking to purchase for 700 or less could uh, opt, opt to get a town home or condo, right? And you have the information here. Now, I also like to showcase this. Do you see sale price percent over original price? This is at what price it actually sold. And there are a couple here that sold over the price. That's why you have 104, 114%. So this to me is an interesting way. So if you're not up to date or you want to get up to date in an area quick, you can do so by pulling this report. Then we have even residential land boats and docks. We have rentals and you can tell. Remember, not all rentals occur in the multiple listing service. These are rentals in the MLS. There are 11 of them active. They range from $2,900 to $12,000 per month. If we scroll down, in the last six months, there have been 38 rentals that have occurred in the multiple listing service, meaning there's a lot of movement. So if you have an investor in this area, a key note would be that if this much is occurring in the multiple listing service, then there's movement. And by the way, they only last 27 days. So I'm hoping that this is something that you may find interesting. Again, it was matrix, right? I went and I'm going to come back and show you the criteria. And it was an actually a search cross property quick because we wanted to know everything that was happening, every leak that was turning, active, closed, rented, and I put it in a zip code. If you wanted to specify, you could do it by property type to get your info, by beds and baths, by subdivision name. You could come to the map and isolate the area. So I'm here, I can see Weston, right? But if I scroll in, I might know that this is one subdivision or area. All right, and this is another correct, and this is probably another right. So, if I wanted to, I could even isolate the areas that I'm interested in. I also want to give you another tip. Uh, many of us look at the map this way you click on map and you leave this version. This is great when we're looking, but when you really want to isolate an area, haven't you noticed that we know the rooftops, foliage, all kinds of stuff? And I can't see it this way. 
but if I switched it to satellite, don't I start to recognize the area, right? These lots are a little bigger, these are a little smaller, right? I see the road, I see the location. So what happens with that? I could come and do a report on a area in particular and then be able to report just by coming in and doing what? Taking a closer peek. So always use what you have available to you to get what you need. So I did a mix here of showing you a little tip and then showing you how to run that report. We also have uh, market reports. Market reports here up on the very top that you can run on demand. You can run your agent production report. Now I never like to pick someone in the class so I pick someone else that I've asked permission to. I'm gonna do an agent production report and um, run a report here on someone and we'll generate it, okay? And this is their activity they've had. Now, sometimes you wanna show this, sometimes you don't, but you wanna know where it is. And again, that was matrix agent production report. And this is for the current year while it's generating. Um, this is sometimes something that when you do have activity, you could extend it. It doesn't have to be for the time period I said, you could do it for a year. So this is a date range for the person and what they've sold, what they've listed, sold volume etc. But you can actually come and accommodate dates here. So you can show activity in the MLS, right? Those are market reports. That's an agent production one. And then there's one here that I really like to show. There's some office and firm, but I want to talk to you about market uh, conditions. The 1004 MC report was a report that was used uh, much by appraisers and still is, which will tell you what's happening in a significant area in an area. So whether it's a building and you work a building or you wanna talk about a zip code or you wanna isolate an address that's several miles around, you could talk about it. So now what I'm gonna do is use the second zip code provided by Gustavo 33351, which you say is Sunrise. And we're gonna do a market condition report on Sunrise. So we're gonna come in and do, well, actually 33351, because maybe Sunrise is composed of more. And while coming to do the market report, we wanna do active and closed. And we wanna make sure that market conditions report run for on data for a year. So let me remove this here and put slash three, six, five. So a dash over. And if we just want single family homes, we would come and select single family homes. You should select the type so you can isolate the information. So here we have it, and we just click to generate the report. And this will talk to you about absorption rates. This will talk to you about months of housing supply. And currently, in the current month, we only have 1.2 uh, months of housing supply in 33351 for right, the single family home. Um, if you notice, here is a comparable list price that has been a, a slight increase. I don't wanna say slight, that's almost 100,000, correct? Right. And the median sale price is that's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. That's what 25%. And, and what I want you also to note here is that you have the median sale price um, has always hovered over 95. So it was over 101%. So what they were offering was over the price that they had enlisted at. Here it was at 97%. And now it's back up higher. Okay. Um, so these are things to denote. So these are the sale prices, which have also increased. And here are the list pricing that they're also increasing. And we went on a, a point there between May and November last year, there was an ultra low. Now, remember that, that for the housing market to be considered uh, balanced, you'd say six to eight months. This is nowhere near six to eight months. So what type of market is it? A seller's market. Um, and a buyer's market would be that there are there's an overabundance of listings and we don't have that. And you can run this report and explain to them what the absorption rate is, you know, how quickly there are selling listings, how many there are, and why we uh, have so few, and then the pricing indicator. Um, it's very interesting to monitor this. Uh, you can isolate it to an area. Did you have a question, uh, a memo? But these two ways for you to gather information on an area, I think are kind of quick and they can set you up for success, which is what we want. I want you always to be able to click and get what you need. Uh, Blanca, you had asked me to repeat 
Um, do you want me to repeat the report I did before the steps? And please feel free to, to, to ask questions. And I see Gustavo asked as well. Now this was the market condition report, but what I did before was a search cross property quick. And what I tried to do was active, closed and rented. Why do I choose this? The other activity, sometimes it's interesting, but I think investors want to know what's happening, what has occurred, and then if there's any rental. Um, also, if you're working with someone that's renting in an area, oh, thank you. Um, if you're working with someone who's already in an area or they're renting, you should also show them this when they're going to rent and say, hey, we need to move you towards being a homeowner. You're renting at X. And you could probably still qualify to buy in the area. So I really think it's it's interesting. All righty, um, I'll continue now. Um, what I'd want to show you now is we do have uh, stats um, here that you can create. I was going to say, Connie, before I was going to say that I just think that something like that quick report on a zip code could really be an ace in your pocket when it comes to educating a buyer in regards to the what I call the HGTV syndrome, which is that everybody thinks that they buy a house for $50,000, put $5,000 in it and sell it for a million. Um, and I think in this market, it's a very good opportunity to educate your buyers that things are going above asking, that things are not on the market for six months, that things are on the market like you saw there. 10 days, 10 days is, is, it's nothing. It's not on the market. It's, it's, it's not real. I mean, 10 days is what, how long it took that person to put it as a off market, yes. but more than likely, more than likely that property was on the market for two days and a contract was signed. So what I, I also want to show you, I'm, I'm coming back to it because I have a, a question here. Um, you can isolate this report. And if you work buildings, uh, you could run this report uh, for a building. And you could do it this way because I rather you get quality from my class because you can come and take this class at the association. But since this is one I want, I want to answer your questions. This is you could isolate a building here, right? And um, I can't believe that it's giving me zero. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again. I'm going to do cross property quick. I'm going to let Matrix have a minute. I'm going to select closed and uh, rented. By the way, I feel so comfortable with you guys that I'm, I'm uh, providing my class from one of our lounge rooms. So if you hear noises, it's because um, I wanted to be with Lisette. And, and uh, so if you hear background, I'm so sorry. So here you go. I'm going to come in results. And I want you, Maria, to see, I'm going to get all the rentals and sales in this building, right? Um, I could come back and make it for a year. Like if we wanted to do a rough study of what's happening, you're the ones that are choosing here. And then how Memo was saying, um, if someone wants to buy here or in an area and you want to uh, draw, I want you to understand that this is a huge tool because working on the data and seeing it, but then deciphering it is such like, that's not what I think most of us study to do, correct? Like, um, so this is something that will, can happen, uh, you can do easily. Remember the all here. I always emphasize that. That's why I show it. Because if you just click here, you're only going to get the 25 that are showing. No, you want everything. And then you can click the print. And, and I'm going to come back and show you how you can do this on a map too. And you click the CMA online summary report and you print a PDF. And there are active five in this building. And I want you to see here that the average right now is 56 days and look at the pricing. So I'm studying a building. I wanted you to see that we could isolate it. Um, I could have put beds and baths if I wanted to. So if I only wanted to see, you know, the two bedrooms or the one bedrooms. And these are the ones I have closed in the last year. In this building have been 48. From 317,000 to 810,000, lasting 121 days, selling at 98%, almost 99% of asking price. And then the um, cost per square foot in the building averages at 469. I didn't I just give you like wowzer information for you to be able to discuss with someone 
the building, an area, that's what I see, that it's a quick way for you to get what you need because we need those talking points. I'm not going to go to the baptism, bat mitzvah, um, family gathering without getting some info because I'm a realtor. I'm going to say so, and they're going to tell me, so how's the market? And I'm going to want to talk about the market in general and then the market in the area where I'm going. You could run this and be ready to go, correct? And then say, hey, if you want additional info, like, you know, let's talk or, you know, let's exchange info. So it's a great way to get in. You have residential rentals here, right? There's six active and you have rented in the last year in the building 52. So if you have an investor, you can show them something like this. They last 21 days to get rented from $2,100 to $5,700. So I hope that this is something that you can use. Now, coming back into here, um, to answer your question, you can come to the map. So of course I was isolating a building. I'm gonna come to criteria and I'm gonna clear it down here. And active again, closed, rented. And um, how many of you use the map like for a pinpoint? So I'm gonna come here to the map and I'm gonna jump to an address. And I want you to see this. Now I can look here for a spool and it'll jump me. It's not looking here, it's just telling me where it is. So if my friend tells me that they're interested in that area, oh my gosh, Connie, it was great, I loved it. I can come into the map, draw a radius, right? And say, well, you know, she wanted to live around there. Here's my distance that I wanna do. This is where she wants to live, 0.5 miles from the school. But she loved it, she thought it was good. I can also come and add the layer of like, is that the area for this high school, right? And it's giving me a hard time here. So let me switch to map. Okay. Um, yeah, this is the break line for Ferguson Senior High. And she wants her kid to go walking distance. But I want to tell her statistically what prices are going. I just need to know that I can map it. This is the area. If she wants to be close. Here's what I have for her. I come to results. So you do with what you need, right? I come into here. I click all. Print. CMA one line summary report. So now I'm giving her isolated information on an area. Is that what you guys wanted? Oh yeah, we're having classes in person. Uh, some, uh, some of you are asking, we are. I'm actually in our Northwestern Day Hialeah location and Robert is having a hybrid class, uh, which means that you could come in person or um, um, decide to do it Zoom, whichever. Here, look, I have one business opportunity. So a sale of a business in this area, one commercial industrial active, you know, and information, active listings, what's closed in the last, I think it was six months, 34, and the same information. So I hope I answered your question about being able to map it and do what I needed to. You have all the luxuries for this report to do what you need in the map. And you can also come and not only isolate like I did here, but you can come in criteria. And I want to talk to you guys about something. Any of you work at Ventura or the beach where you may have a cloister of buildings? So it's not one building. It's five or six that were built the same. Uh, you could do here more and put all of the building addresses and do your study based off of the building's addresses. Now, I'm going to resort back uh, to uh, my friend Memo and go, Memo, do you remember your Kendall days? Do you remember your Kendall days? Now I deny, I deny my Kendall days, but yes, oh, absolutely. Okay, no. <laughs> then I'll I'll speak I'll speak uh, without you then. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, I'm teasing. Of course uh, I do. And there were areas in Kendall that were very distinct. Um, and there was there's these block buildings that are all over Miami Dade and Broward County that were built in the late 70s, early 80s, where there were mm -hmm. two bedroom, two bath apartments, condos or three bedroom, two bath, but they were spacious, but they were block built. That mm -hmm. back then went for 60, 70 K and now we're going for 180 and something. People fight for those buildings because of the location. A lot of them are located right next to highways and, and locations. There's a set of them right in front of Miami-Dade Community College. I'll give you a perfect example. I grew up in Winston Park and it was called Glade Winds and it was the exact same thing. Uh, those were going for $30,000 and the average house in Winston Park when I was growing up was going for 150. 
let alone if you went to Calusa, there were, you know, the mini mansions and everything else. So yeah, those were like a little gem because you could get something for thirty thousand dollars in in a in an in an area and district that the schools were superior. If you want to call it that. So what I love, um, I love, I love about uh, doing something like that is that those cloister buildings that are found between these really pretty townhomes or, or single family homes offer the opportunity for people that are looking to invest, be first time home buyers, et cetera. So when you're in this industry, you meet a whole realm of people and you can isolate those cloister buildings by knowing the addresses. So you could put in here 10835 Southwest 112, 10825 Southwest. So I want you to see how you can use it. This, this is your tool. So you can get statistics on those things. That was my hyper local stuff. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, coming into the association and clicking. Uh, Connie, one second before you move on. Rosa is asking about the 55 uh, plus community. Rosa, if you go under the search, you scroll down, there is a, an option for HOPA, which is housing for older persons. Uh, you see this, oh, Al, it's, it's housing older housing persons act. Act, um, there we go, thank and, you. And I want you to know that in Miami-Dade and Broward County, there are building in very unique and significant areas um, leasing and 55 plus communities that are new. So watch for that. But what Memo is telling you here is the add and remove and the field to search for is HOPA and you select it and you click to add it. And once you've put it into the selected field, you're good to go, it's part of your search. So I would add it here. And then if you're picky like me and it's something I'm always gonna use. Now section eight is not something that we discuss because we accept it but we have an incredible section eight class. If you remind me right before we um, break, I will show you how to get to that section eight class, which is three hours of explaining how to use the voucher system, how to work with someone who wants to rent, and then of course, how to be the owner and be a part of the program. And we also have a whole section of section eight information on the site. So I promise I'll give you the info, but I wanted you to see here, once you add that to the search type, you will have it down here. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Here's the HOPA and you could do unverified and verified. You can select both by clicking command or control and you could do your search that way. Okay. All right. So um, I hope I answered everything. So news, um, there's a whole area here on news. And if you need some statistics to be able to post and share, I want you to know that um, for the first time in a very long time, we have dreamed of this. We actually have some market snapshots here. So sometimes what you want is to raise some interest and you'd like something, you can actually, there's videos here, but on the right-hand side, you can now download PDFs and JPEGs. Any of you Instagrammers, are you Instagram users? No, no one's on social media, just a memo. Daily. Okay, so I'm going to answer a couple of things here. The reason that I love the fact that we have um, this JPEG situation is we always have stuff to post uh, for Facebook. And Facebook doesn't allow you on a business page I get to get as much connection. But if you have a picture and you know how to create a reel, uh, you can get connections to people you've never had before. So you can download these market snapshots, right? Or you can do a JPEG. Um, so what county are you guys in? I, some of you told me Broward. So look, Broward market snapshot, and you have the decrease in uh, total, the single family, uh, the single family and the dollar volume, and then the active listing and the dollar volume. And this is something that if you look at it, of course, I can right click and save this image. But this is the perfect size for what? An Instagram story, correct? So what a great way to say, hey, if you're looking for details in the area, here's the latest, greatest update. And for more, contact me. Okay, and it's already set and done. You also have them for Miami-Dade. Okay, um, and then we have our whole coverage area, which is Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, Martin, and St. Lucie. You have these wonderful videos that explain what's happening that you can download and share, or you can simply share from YouTube, so you could click here to share. Now that was the first part of our news area. The other part that I like here is you have some Miami-Dade real-time market stats. You have South Florida market stats here for you to be able to see. 
where you have what's closed, what's happening, et cetera. But this is for everything. But guess what? I could scroll down here and I could get detailed reports. So if you're inter interested, here's the single family detailed report and it's a PDF. So what I like about this is that you could incorporate this into your PowerPoint presentations and more. And you have the statistics, the comparison in dollar value from the year before, et cetera, medium time to co uh, contract. So you can gather how many days things are taking, et cetera. So all of this at your fingertips, if you would come to your website and click on news and get it. So market snapshots and infographics and more. Now, as a member of Miami, all of you are also, guess what? Florida Realtors, and you have access to the sun stats, sun stats. Why I like this, I love the infographics and the information that you get on the news, but how many of us want to brand it? So when you click there, you're going to come into here and to brand it to you, of course, you're going to come into settings and this is sun stats. You click into settings. Let me log back in. And here in the settings, right? I click in settings. I'm going to take a minute and be sure to add my name my organization, my address, my contact. I'm going to add my photo because it's all about branding and my logo. So the first thing to do to make this yours, to make this yours is what? Come in and come into the settings and make sure to mark your information. Now, the next thing I love here is that you can actually select geographic areas to have click access to. So using the area that... Um, was asked of me earlier on, I think it was 333, 333 uh, 51, right? And though it comes out as for Lauderdale, you know, it's sunrise. And right before that, Maria had sent me 332. All right, and we added in and I saved my settings. What am I doing here? When I come to my dashboard, I'm gonna of course see the first one, right? And I can see the closed sales. I can come down and see month of inventory and supply, et cetera. I can create a chart from here, right? And then since I have them saved on my settings, this is what I wanted to show you. Here is my 33351 info for Fort Lauderdale for little, my little area in Sunrise. And I can look here for um, average sale price, cash sales, cash sales as a percent of closed, Close sale, dollar volume, medium percent of original price, median sale price. Now, why do I fuss about the median? Is because that's the price that occurs most often. So it's a good teller of what happens. Medium time to contract, month of supplies, like you have all of these presets here. So if you're marketing and farming in an area, you may wanna come into here and talk about this, one of these reports here and I'm gonna select the median one. You can choose for all property, single family, townhouses, manufactured homes. I'm gonna leave the single family, right? And then you can do a month, a quarter, a year, right? I'm gonna do a month and why? Because what if I'm posting this on a monthly basis? I'm gonna click apply and here I can download it or download it with branding. So I download a photo of what's happening in my area with sales, with my information. Let me make sure that you see that. Okay. But this is the new thing. That was cool. But how many of you like infographics? Look at this one. I can do a creator of an infographic here and I can come and select my area. So now I'm gonna pick on the second area that was provided to me, which you told me was a piece of Weston, here it is. And I'm gonna come in and do single family homes. And I'm going to select um, active inventory, median sale price. And then I want here, close sales, right? And click apply. Do you see this infographic here? You can share it to Facebook. and post it. You can share it to Twitter 
to LinkedIn. You can email it. You can download it for a presentation and you can print. But it's talking about that area. Maria, I hope you're happy that you can see this, which is active inventory 20, less 20% um, 20 less than last year from a year ago. The median sale price in the area up 61%. The closed sales are down from last year. The dollar volume, new listings and pending sales, all branded to you. You saw that that was a couple of clicks. I came from Miami Realtors to Sunstats, so you're already logged in. From Sunstats, I always teach you this, come into settings and make it yours. Mark your distinct areas of interest. Why? So that you can have it drop down and be available to you. I showed you, you could build a chart. But this is something that you can do where I can do a couple of them and I can feature all of the areas that I cover on Instagram, right? And do a series of pictures. With that same series of pictures, I could create a reel, which could attract even more people, those that are not following me. And guess who appears? You, 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 your logo and your contact info. So with that, um, I hope that you loved of what I've provided so far. Um, I could share more, but I think I gave you like a whole overview of what you could do. Um, I am willing to go into RPR and I want to. I just want to make sure I have enough time. Do I have time? No, I don't have time. Yes, I have time. Memo. Yes, I have time. Uh, Blanca, I'm not going to forget you in section eight, but let me show you something else. How many of you come into RPR and you live in the residential realm, but how many of you would love to know your area further? I believe Memo is recording. I'm, uh, it shows that it is, so he's going to be able to have it to you in uh, London Foster. All right, the key into knowing your area more and who consumes and who works in your area is many times the key to success. Because sometimes we farm five miles or three miles around where we live or where our office is, but we could always use more details. And I think you're gonna like this. I'm gonna click over to commercial and I'm gonna use the 33332. So thank you guys for sharing. I told you I was gonna use them. And here I have it. And this is all fine and dandy, how nice. I just want to come and create a report because this is about me getting more. And I want to do a trade area report. I can also do a trade area analysis, but I want to do this one. I want to view a sample so you could see it. And what this is going to show you um, is it'll talk about the tapestry and the people that make up the area and what their makeup and market activity and how they purchase and their socioeconomic traits. Okay, trade area report. I could put someone's name on it if I want and I can run this report. We're gonna give it a second here while it works. Now, I always come in and tell people, we offer you an RPR residential class, but the truth is that that RPR commercial class, everyone should take. So that's where we talk about these report elements. Nice thing about this is that it'll keep the information for you for up to 30 days and it'll show you what area you're looking at it for. These are other areas that I guess I studied before in April when I was teaching, but I want you, we'll wait a couple of seconds for this one, but I do want you to see that you can delete, post on Facebook, rerun the report and view report activity. So once you came in here and you decided, okay, every month I'm gonna do this, you do it the first couple of days of the month, or you may want to wait until the 15th. Always the 15th is good because data has been updated from the MLS. Um, you can actually come into here, right? And let me, uh, one second. You can come into here and then instead of running it again or recreating it, you would just run, rerun your report. The little reminder for yourself that if you did it on the 5th, to come back on the 4th and rerun it. Assistants can access RPR when you do your settings a setup here on the very top, you can uh, put your assistant information. So while this is popping up, I want to show you this one for 
through 3178, right? And I wanna go ahead and download it and so you can see it. One of the things I like is that it marks the area. It has all of your info, right? And all of your links, which are linkable. So I could click here and go to Facebook. Got it? Let me come back and click the back button. I love that because if you were to share it, people will click hyperlinks. You can put in your collateral. So if you have London Foster collateral that you would like to add in marketing flyers, you can add them in. And then you can come and start reviewing your report, which will give you medium household income, median age, the population of an area, the dominant segment here is up and coming families. Um, their ethnic enclaves, suburban uh, area livers, they like single family homes. The household type, this is a married couple. Average household size, 3.1, median age 30, diversity index, household income, net worth, medium home value, ownership, 74% own, professional services, right? Or services are their employment. They have college degrees. Now people in this area, they're up and coming professional pride elders, boom burbs and soccer moms. If you come out, it'll give you information on who these people are, their neighborhood, their market profile and their socioeconomic traits. Careful shoppers, aware of prices, willing to shop around, seek the latest and greatest in technology. Now I'm gonna come back to RPR, but the report for the area of interest is done. And I always like to show this. Scroll down and here you have professional pride, Boomberg's top tier, workday, drive and unclassify. So you have the ability to see here, you know, preferred activities, own latest tablets, smartphones and laptops. Hold 401k and IRA plan securities. Avid readers, Epicurean sports, home service magazines. They own three vehicles or more. Is this not insightful? Could you not share this with someone who you were preparing to invest in an area? Shouldn't you know this about your area? Have you ever run one of these reports? Here we have professional pride, right? Socioeconomic traits, their profiles. They work out, they have an elliptical, a treadmill, right? Yes, where is this coming from? I love the fact that you ask for source uh, data. Um, I'm hoping that it was here. If not, I'll run to another area uh, to show you. Here's the trade uh, data from RPR. It's part of the report. Um, it's a resource to you. It's, whole, it's a subsidiary of National Association of Realtors. That's who RPR is. The listing data comes from MLSs that share public records data, including tax assessment, deed, foreclosure, distressed, market conditions based on listing and public record data, census and employment data from the U.S. Census and U.S. Bureau of Labor, demographic and trends from ESRI. Um, many moons ago in another lifetime, I worked with a company um, who did geolocalization. Uh, it was a worldwide international company based out of Dayton, Ohio. Um, in my prior life, I ran a couple of offices for them, and we were the collectors of all types of data and localization. I used Estuary for mapping. It was quite incredible what they are capable of doing back then and what they are now. Um, something similar to this is what we use to analyze COVID and what was happening in different segments. So the demographics and trends that they have here are actually out of this world. Uh, classified U.S. residential neighborhood, unique segment information, socioeconomic and demographic characteristics. Business data, including consumer expenditures, commercial market potential, retail, all of that is from here. School data from the company Niche and uh, specialty data sets such as walkability scores. You even have an update of frequency. I hope I answered your question, Ms. Maria. Um, it's all right here. It's in the report. And what I like about this is um, you even have traffic counts. If there's movement, they go shopping um, and you get information from one. Notice please that historically we don't have things from this last year. They're working on that. You have home valuation comparisons for the area, for the zip code Broward and Florida, the changes that have occurred in the uh, area versus the same to other items, medium price, 12 months change and more. 
but it's this um, review of those that work in the area that I find amazing. And that happens up here in those tapestries where you can start to learn about the boom burbs, right? And you get information on the top tier and you understand who they are. Like these folks will go to the opera and Nordstrom, but they also will go to Target, Kohl's and Macy's and Bed Bath and Beyond. And they also shop on Amazon. So you understand them a little bit further, or at least confirm what you know. And this was from our PR. And I made you switch from your comfort zone, from doing stuff on the residential to come to the commercial to get yourself some tweak and info. I think this is great uh, stats for you to share for an investor, for someone looking to go into an area and asking you about what the area is like and you're not sure what you can disclose. What a great way to say, you know, this is what the area is made up of, right? Without going and delving into inappropriate things. And um, I love the fact that you can always come back to the report area, click through and um, oops, I came to the residential. I'll, I'll go back, but you can always see them here for the last 30 days. So a great way for you to be able to do items. Before I, I get information, before I let you go, I promise section eight info. And when you log into the Miami Realtors, right? On the very top, you have Miami Realtors Live. And here you have, uh, along with a reservoir of trainings, you also have national, international, and local trainers that may be in the business, not just your Miami trainers, right? And, uh, you know, of course, it's important. We even have this uh, recording from April 20, uh, leveraging market stats. But you wanted some Section 8 info. So you can come to the very top and click. And here is a Section 8 virtual class. This one is, um, though it's dated 2020, this one talks about the voucher program and how do you work. And here, this is not Section 8. It's about real estate. But you can click through here and get a, a, and watch the whole seminar. Very enlightening. Not only do we have this, I can't share this with you. That's why I showed you how to get here. Um, also, when on the website, if you would come to the advocacy area here, uh, remember that what they do and how they use RPAC, you get information here. <coughs> but here, if you scroll down, you're going to see that you have Section 8 housing uh, choice vouchers and assistant animals. You have FHA condo financing guide and information. So here's your Section 8 info. You do not look for Section 8. Section 8 is not named. You cannot redirect. Anyone posting in the MLS should be accepting. Okay. Um, we do not mention it. So here you have the voucher program video, housing assistant, fair market rents, home inspection, and HUD fact sheet. And by the way, we offer a rental class. So if you're working with renters, we offer you a rental class for you to understand the whole dynamics of what you have access to, including Rental Beast and more. It is a two-hour jam-packed class. And from what I'm seeing by the fall time, renting is going to be such a hot um, commodity here that we're going to even have you some statistics and maybe some rental CMAs that we do not currently have. So please look forward to that memo. Sign note to that. I would love to visit you in September or October if you would permit me, and we could do that rental class so I can update you on those changes that are coming so you could be one of the first to see it. How about that? If you guys like that, um, I could delve into that and we could do it. Just let the summer pass a little bit so that I can give you, I'm hoping that that CMA is available and I'd love to share it with you because that would be a first, something like that that you can do. Um, it's always a huge pleasure uh, to be with your office and provide you info. Um, this is section eight uh, information. I showed you a video and the info here. Um, I also want to take a minute, and though it's no longer April and Fair Housing Month, I do want you to understand how the website works for your own. Uh, you can click into here and do Fair Housing, and you have a whole array of items that come up. Uh, please be aware of Fair Housing. Um, we do have a page on fair housing. You could actually come to realtors.com forward slash fair housing. Okay. And you have information here and there are key words to be used and not used. I cannot with what we've discussed a little bit, not show you um, information here. And then the fair housing for Miami Dade and Broward. But I want to leave you with this little guide. And um, 
Give me a second. I want to show you here, there's a guide of appropriate words. And I always try to make sure I use them. I'm not saying I'm 100% successful, but this is a download that you can use and people don't know to come into here. So guess what? Now you know. And I hope that I was able to answer the questions that you had. Um, fair housing advertising word phrase list. These are the acceptables and these are the unacceptables. Be very careful, all right? And these, if you stay within this realm, you're all good. Senior discounts, square footage, starter homes, senior citizens, retirees. Like, um, so some of you were asking about those. HOPA community may be used when housing requirements meet the Fair Housing Act criteria of Housing Older Person Act, but you can use these, right? Acceptable, sophisticated student housing within walking distance of, because if you say it's nearby or close to, but what if it's not for someone who's disabled, you could use something like that. Near mass transit, near Gulf, near the beach, right? Um, nanny room, no drugs, no drinking, just to let you know what's appropriate and what's not. So I think that this is great, especially if you're writing remarks or you're using the internet to write. What a great guide. Okay, there I went from all kinds of statistics and data. Um, I hope you enjoyed what I had to offer. It's always a pleasure to be with all of you. Um, and I think I answered just about everything that was sent my way. Oh, I always thank Memo for having us and thank you for being members. Um, do remember what I let you know about renewing and you never know if you renew soon. Um, maybe you could be one of the winners that are showcased here. All right. And if you do come to Rock the Market on July 29th, I think I'm going to be here. So I'd love to show you my cape that Memo mentioned. <laughs> thank you, James, Christina. Um, it's been a pleasure. Maria, Eric, so many of you that I remember um, from Zoom and then from having met you. I hope I was able to answer your questions and provide you information and give you some insights on what you can do to post statistics, make statistics yours, and make um, this South Florida area uh, your area that you can sell. What'd you learn today, Gustavo? One new thing? I hope so. If I'm not mistaken, Memo was saying that um, it is being recorded and everything that he provides will be on the London Foster. I mentioned, I think he mentioned something about a training area on the page where he uh, will take this recording and add it in. I'm not sure if we, if I lost Memo or not. He may be busy. All righty, Michael, thank you all very much. I'm so glad that you were you were able to take little tidbits. The idea is that if you come to one of these, that you can take a couple of items with you to make your work, uh, your work uh, easier and for you to get more. Remember what I showed you in that RPR report? Oh, that's just a key element to success. Uh, be mindful that when you know about the area, you know who lives and what they do um, in the area and, and what their likes are, it makes it easier to market to them right? You'd hate to go into an area of urban hipster and start to talk to them about kids and what to do at the park when they're going to be like, what are you talking about? So what a great way to help you um, be productive and learn more. I hope I was a part of that. I don't see a memo coming uh, back. So if you have questions, I'll be around. Oh, he's here. Where are you, memo? Hi, Carlos. <laughs> How are you, honey? How are you? How is everybody doing? You. Besides, huh? um, besides all of this, how are you all doing? Are we, are we mass learning in? Uh, uh, yeah. Zoom? You're tired. Me retired? Oh no, you're retired. I didn't. I, I didn't know if you said tired or retired. Uh, no. Oh, by Neither the way, I, I'm getting I'm getting uh, questions about classes. The association offers an array of classes via the calendar, 
And for you uh, asking, we offer five MLS classes. Uh, we endeavor to give them every month. There are three tech trainers. Hybrid classes, some of you were asking, if you see the word hybrid, that means that we're giving them in person as well as via Zoom. And then we have all kinds of uh, courses being offered from commercial MLS to rentals. Uh, here we have the one that we teach. So when I was talking to you about rentals, short-term research, marketing, and more. Uh, Remind Pro, uh, boosting your business. There's a little bit of everything and you can look in here. We're only halfway through May. Uh, unbelievable, almost halfway through the year. Uh, but here you have a whole bunch of items. And look, one of you is asking and tomorrow there's a class called Selling Seniors. Uh, so maybe you want to join. It's uh, via Zoom, it seems. Um, even though it's marked for Jupiter, you could join in. Um, we have a Pivo uh, course, uh, which is a gadget that you can use to help your social media and use your phone uh, to use its camera to another level. And then uh, we also have a 101 class starting tomorrow in Spanish. And we always have items available. And we also have the YouTube channel. And I can share that with you guys. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you come. We're up to 7,700 subscribers. Uh, we have wonderful videos here and tips. This month is CMA month, so we're talking all about the CMA and giving you tips. Um, you can actually come in and get this info. I'll share it with you via the chat. All righty. I don't know if Memo walked away. I hope everything is okay. Uh oh. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I, Did I you text him? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, no, I have it. I have it because I was teaching you guys. Um, let me send him a little message. Isn't it funny? I um. Hey, sorry about that, Connie. I got a call. I figured. How are you? Sorry about that. Um, okay, so how do we do? Did we finish? Yeah, we're done. And okay. uh, I taught them a little bit of everything. I took them to RPR on the commercial segment. Um, and I, I really enjoy it. You know, I do. And then I also offered, we're going to be having some changes and rental statistics because um, a lot of them asked about some rental items and I got some direct questions. So mm -hmm. maybe for September, or October, we could do a class where we could delve in because we're uh, crossing our fingers to be able to give a rental CMA, which is not something that we currently have. Um, and if they're interested, we, we could do a class like that where we review. Absolutely. I think, that'll be, I think that would be wonderful. Let's so go we'll, ahead and, and uh, get we'll, with the set and we'll, and we'll, and we'll put it on the, on the calendar because I think that would be a great idea. I think they're doing one on the CMA, I think would be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you'd, you'd be surprised because a lot of people that uh, are coming to us also, a, I, th I think it would be a really good idea to do some kind of hybrid of matrix. I think everybody knows um, the basics of matrix, but I, especially on, I, the, on the automated fields. I've been teaching lately um, matrix with a little bit of a twist uh, by showing you uh, maybe how to get more from it. So if you want to do that along with some of the automation and the one. Yeah, I think that, that that's one of the things that I always get questions on. And, you know, I send them to the video because honestly, I don't have a bandwidth to sit there and do a trading on every single one. But one of the oh, things that everybody's super do, um, fascinated with is, is doing the automated, especially for, for, um, for future clients. It's like one of the things that I always do is if I meet someone, I make a little note on their business card, like, where do you live? <laughs> and I'll send them, listen, I know you don't want to deal with me. I know you don't want to work with a realtor, but here's an automated so you can see what's on the market in your area or what's sold yeah. in your area. And I send it to them on a weekly basis. And you'll be surprised how many people don't look at it for the first six times. And on the seventh time they go in, on the eighth time they're, they're navigating. A, a, since, you you're know, saying, since you're saying that, Memo, I love it. We could also talk about this. Mm -hmm. And this is a newsletter that you can create. And what you do is you invite the customer and you say, hey, this is just an invite to give you market trend and stats. Um, you, um, you'll get it on a monthly basis. It's by no means a way of me telling you I'm going to be selling, but it wouldn't it be great to know what your area is doing. You can send this to a renter or uh, someone who owns. And if you work with an investor, 
you can send them one for each of the properties so they can keep up with the market trends and so what's that's happening. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I, th I think we should do that. Let's, let's do this, that new property one, watch and um, let's do the CMA. And again, if anyone has any ideas uh, on what they would like for trainings to be about, I highly recommend that you visit the LondonFoster.net back office. There's actually a suggestion box and you can put it in there and would really, really appreciate that kind of feedback. Memo, they were asking if you were going to have this recording available to them. Oh, absolutely. I, and I wrote absolutely several times. Oh, all I'm of sorry. our recordings, all of our, all of our trainings are recorded. All of our trainings are posted on our back office. So absolutely, guys, that's a great idea. Um, I'm getting a private message. Uh, I need daily direct training, okay. any new things and I'm association. Yeah, I highly recommend. I don't know if you can do that, uh, Connie, real quick. Go into the education calendar. Uh, guys, this is the reason why we pay all this great money. Hey, I, 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 I'm, and Connie, I'm going to tell you this because I always laugh. Um, I get people, you know, when the association fees come up, I get all the crying. Oh my God, can you believe it went up $30? And guys, we got off easy. $1,000 a year to start a business is nothing. Look around this room of people that are in this chat. I know what you guys make. I know how much, how many deals you guys close. It is a huge opportunity to have a business that all you pay is a thousand dollars. But let me tell you something. I milk it. I make them, I make them pay me back in education. I tell you, I buy the platinum. So I get a, I get a designation every year. I get, I get the platinum. I get the Supra and the e-sign automatically. But guys, look at the schedule. These people go crazy. I mean, you can't keep up. How, who can do five trainings a day? Who can do seven trainings a day? I mean, there's really, a, it's a plethora of opportunity for you guys to be live if you really want to be live in the training. But if you then go to the education library, I, Connie, correct me. How many videos do you guys have up there? We have uh, 400 of ours that are just uh, uh, from the last uh, year because we removed older ones because uh, so we have about 400, 450 videos on YouTube alone, mm -hmm. plus another, I think, 800 or so that are on Miami Realtors Live where I so showed this. Okay, so you guys heard it here. You have a you have a total of three trainings. You can take four if you only do it Monday through Friday. Uh, you know you can take four trainings a day. I mean this is this is I'll tell you I, I'm 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 a member of Rebney. Uh, I'm a member of the New Jersey Association and the Connecticut Association. You guys have no idea. You have no idea. Uh, how well we have it, how good we have it, how, what, what an amazing association you have in regards to training. And if, and if for somebody, no, it's absolutely true. And for somebody who's just starting in, in, in real estate, especially, if you want to know, I'll tell you guys what I think, my own personal opinion, and Connie, you tell me what you think. I think you should take Matrix 101, 201, 301. And I would even dare to say that if you don't take 401, you're messing up. You need to take oh. RPR. You need to take <laughs> IMAP. You need to take as is contract. You need to take a, a, the rental, a contract to lease and the lease contract. And that and those seven trainings should be the basic. And I think you should take it twice and three times and four times. And until you actually are able to teach a class in Matrix, you should take it again and again and again because it is, you're always going to learn something. There's always going to be somebody in that class that says something, oh, that you go, wow, I didn't think of that. And that's the reason why I started doing the automated. I meet anyone I meet, I get on my phone, I send them an automated email for the rest of their life. And I go into the ones that haven't opened it and I call them and I go, hey, have you seen my emails? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, let me resend it to you. Boom. I, I, I get a lot of my business through, through, through mm -hmm. the, 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 what I call the, 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 the road of least resistance, which is friends and family. So mm -hmm. absolutely take those trainings. Um, there are amazing trainings on photography, on marketing, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. It, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And you can, but those seven trainings, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Connie, but I think that those are the basics. I mean, I don't, and I would be embarrassed for, to even talk to someone if I didn't for know that. Those of you that have been in it for a while, that fourth class, so it's at Edit Listing Maintenance. I want to emphasize that really what we're showcasing now is how you can leverage those input sheets to understand the database so you can search better. And that's what I was offering you a bit memo when we do that class that you want on matrix is 
go ahead. And, if you understand what goes into it, you know what to pull from it. So if you understand the input sheet, even though you're not currently a listing agent, it'll allow you to search better because you can know how to say, okay, I'm looking for a gated community. Click that, go to the map, view it, and then go, wait a second. I know there's more properties here. Remove it because you draw the area and then you get the whole insight because one listing agent might click gated community and the other one may not. So what you do is you start to use um, all of the knowledge you have to make the system give you even more. And I'd love to offer a class like that. There's 101, 201, 301, and there's even 401 and 501 now. A 401 is all about that. Add, edit, and how you enter listings and adding photos and enhancing information. And the 501 is to stay out of trouble. And uh, he is right. You need to create a CMA. You need to understand the tax data. You need to know about properties. And that's why IMAP and RPR are great. And another thing that you guys have access to, you want to prospect, want to prospect and farm, uh, to get the most out of the prospecting and farming, you may want to take a Remind Pro class or a prospecting and farming class to help you decipher and know what area you want to work with. You could run a report like I showed you today on an area with a zip code, because if there is no activity showing up in that report, should you be prospecting and farming in that area? Or should you look at another area as well that does have movement and focus on breaking the ice on the one that doesn't have movement, but work where things are happening. So such a great way to get information and be in the business. Uh, again, thank you, Memo, a huge hug to you. Um, and I asked them if they would come to Rock the Market, I'd promise I'd wear my cape. Oh my God! Yes, uh, we're we're, oh God. we're actually we're gonna be there. We're gonna be there. We're gonna have a great time. Who's that, Lisette? No, 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 it's not. It was it was Robert taking a peek. Um, oh, okay. we're, we're all together here. Um, we don't always get to be together, so we came um all to be with Lisette. Um, so yeah, they're all like anxious. Give everybody my best. And again, Connie, we thank you so much on behalf of London Foster. On behalf of Bobby, un abrazo. We love having you on here. And it's a great privilege to have such, uh, you know, such great trainers coming on to London Foster and fomenting our growth and fomenting our, our team. And for all of you that participated, and especially the 18 that stayed late, uh, as always, I appreciate it. Guys, uh, I, I, I know I drill this into you guys every single week, but man, we're blessed. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of to, to, to celebrate at our association, at our city. At our, at our in our real estate market, I love when people tell me, "Oh my God, but the association is so expensive." I'm like, "You have no idea what expensive it is. You have no idea what it's like to run your own business." For those of you that I know have have had uh, to venture into the restaurant business or commerce or even e-commerce, what business do you know that for less than eighty dollars a month uh, you get to participate and grow and 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 make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars? No, none. A, but in, and especially in this beautiful weather, I mean, I'm sitting here, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take off my screen so I can show you guys real quick. My house is a mess, but I don't care. A, we're sitting here in, in the most beautiful place in the world. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you guys, can, does, it, does it sign in? Oh, it doesn't. Well, I have the view of all the cruise ships. I, I sit here in this beautiful weather. I go out. I go out to I go out to my balcony in the middle of a training muted. I mean, we we're so blessed, and especially in regards to what we're learning, uh, you know, I I drill this to you guys all the time. I'm like, like you know, you you can't just show up. You got to show up early. You got to show up prepared. You got to show up willing to dodge bullets. Right? Clients come in and they say to you, you know, what's the square footage? And you haven't even read the the, the spec sheet, guys. You know, take a minute. I, I always say this in my 101 training, um, you know, do you show up late? Do you show up on time or do you show up early? And everybody obviously says, oh, I show up early. Why? Why do you show up early to an appointment? To beat the client? What, does anybody know? Come on, guys. Tell me, tell me the answer. Why do you show up early? Be to ready. Beat? Be ready. Set it up like you said last time. Yeah. Open the blinds. Guys, guys we live in 90% humidity. We live in Lizard County. Is it true? We, there's termites, there's cockroaches, there's there's spider webs. The apartment that the owner is cheap and he puts the, the, the AC at 85 degrees. It is your responsibility to show up early, put the AC at full blast, flush the toilets, turn on the shower. Have you ever been to an apartment and the, and the client opens a shower and it goes, 
and then she turns around to her husband. They have a problem. They have a plumbing problem. It's all related, guys. You have to show up early. You have to make sure there's no lizards, no cockroaches. You flush all the toilets. You, you open up all the sinks. You spray. I have a bag, a little, uh, by the way, it's a London Foster bag. And I have my spray because I want to make it smell nice. It's all related. I want to read the sheet. I want to do a video to post on social media. This is all related to what you just learned today. Even though Connie was teaching you about matrix, it's about being prepared. Yeah. Think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. Rosa's got a client. She's in Brickle. Look at that beautiful view. And her client in Brickle says to her, I want to see this building, this building, and this building. And she pulls up listings and she makes six appointments. Now, if she didn't study the listings, who's at fault? If she didn't study the building, who's at fault? If she didn't study the market, what's going on, what's selling, what Connie just showed us, what the breath is, how quick things are moving, who's at fault? She should have all that information three days before the showing and get her client online and say, hey, guys, this is what I'm going to show you. This is what's going on. This is what the market's looking like. Doesn't that change the narrative in regards to the buyer? Wouldn't the buyer be like, hey, listen, I spoke to Rosa and the breath is seven days. We better get there with a checkbook. We better be ready to buy. Honey, we're going to look at six properties. You need to pick one. Why? Because next week they're gone. She didn't have to force him. She didn't have to pull their arm. She just told them what was going on. And that's Rosa's perspective. And this is, this is the reason why you do these trainings is because you want to be able to have the tools to show up and be knowledgeable. I had a client the other day, a Greek client that said to me, do you know this, this? There was no way I could know all the stuff that he was asking. There was no way. I mean, it was like things with regarding the association and the minutes and whatever. And I said to him, no, I don't know any of that, but I can get you the information in 24 hours. Now, of course, I'm texting my, my colleague that I work with and I'm like, boo, 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 boo. look this up, look this up, look this up. And she's sending me all the answers and I'm copying and pasting them and I'm putting them in the email while we're still talking. And I sent him the email. And I said, oh, by the way, what you asked me, it's in your email. He goes, how did you get the answer? I go, I'm, I'm back to it. But it was my responsibility to have asked those questions, correct? So hopefully we learned that today. Hopefully we grew and we, and we got something great out of it. I thank you guys all for coming on. And I'm gonna go ahead and end this call with a great thank you to Connie and the association once again. And I thank yeah. everybody who participated, guys. Awesome job. Thank and you. as I said, this will be on LondonFoster.net under education. The video will be available to all of you. I thank you and have a great day. Thank you.